Hi, my name is Marie Hebert from the Southeast Asia program here at CSIS. Our guest today is Education Minister Hang Sui Kiet. It's a delight to have you here. Thank you. Um, could I just ask you, in general terms, how do you see the state of U.S.-Singapore education cooperation? And particularly, could you also tell us a little bit about the MOU you signed to with Secretary Duncan yesterday? Well, we have always had a very close uh, educational collaboration between the U.S. and Singapore. Uh, many of our students study here, and many of the students in the U.S. also go to Singapore for exchange programs uh, with the American School in Singapore. And this particular MOU builds on an earlier collaboration in the teaching and learning of mathematics and science, and it extends it into two areas. One is on educational uh, research and benchmarking, and the other one on the leadership development and teacher development. Tell, tell us a little bit about the uh, U.S. educational initiatives in Singapore. Many U U.S. colleges and universities actually have campuses now in Singapore. Tell yes, us a little bit yes about indeed. That. I think the U.S. has uh, many peaks of excellence, especially in higher education. And I'm very pleased that so many of, our, so many of the universities have uh, collaborations with Singapore universities. In fact, more than 60 MOUs have been signed. And specifically, there are a number who have, which has set up uh, campuses and joint programs in Singapore. So for example, MIT has, uh, is set setting up together with uh, Singapore, a University of Technology and Design, and also with uh, Zhejiang Univers University from China as one of the partners. And what they do is to bring, uh, the bring together science, technology, and uh, design into one campus. And an opportunity to design a university course uh, from ground up. Uh, now, the other major collaboration would be at between the Duke University and the National University of Singapore to s set up a graduate medical school that trains both medical practitioners as well as uh, researchers. Then, of course, we have this uh, collaboration between Columbia University, the uh, Teachers College, and our National Institute of Education offering a master's in uh, leadership, educational leadership and, and changed. Now, uh, these are just some, some examples and in fact there are many others uh, which are in the, uh, which have been progressing very well. Now, Singapore also has some presence in the United States with, with its math and science curriculum. Right. Do you know about how many U.S. Uh, uh, schools use the Singapore math and science curriculum yes. and why is it that they do this? Well, I understand that a number of uh, schools in the U.S. are using uh, the, the curriculum and the uh, teaching methods in mathematics and science. I think we've always had a strong emphasis in the teaching of mathematics and science and uh, we've sort of developed a systematic approach to helping students of all ability levels to have a grasp of mathematics and, and science. And I'm happy that it is being uh, used in some of the schools. But we, are, we learn a lot from the US. Uh, in fact, for instance, we set up a specialized school of uh, science and uh, maths and science in Singapore after learning from the US. And the US has a very diverse system. So there are many things, many interesting innovations that are happening all the time, and we uh, learn a great deal. Now there are about, f there were last year, in the last school year, about 4,300 Singaporeans studying in the United States. That's mm -hmm. up about 6% or so from the previous year. Do you expect this trend of Singaporeans continue to study here and the numbers continuing to mm -hmm. grow to continue? Well, I think uh, many students from all over the world, and especially from Asia, come and study in the U.S. Singapore students come here to do their uh, PhDs, masters, and uh, and the first degree, and at the same time, we see also you know many students from other parts of the world uh, studying in Asia and in Singapore. And I think this is uh, this is a good trend. In a more globalized world, it is important for our st for our students to learn about other culture, to to learn different perspectives, and uh, to make friends. And in the long run, they will be able to collaborates better and to build a better world. You, uh, uh, when you started talking a few minutes ago, you talked about increasing cooperation between the U.S. and Singapore mm -hmm. and teacher development and school leadership as well as education research and right. benchmarking studies. Yes. 
Can you tell us a little bit of how you see that cooperation developing over the years to come? Yes. Well, the <coughs> MOU that we have signed provides a good uh, sort of umbrella for the different institutions and for our uh, educators to come together to explore areas of collaboration, uh, building on each other's strengths. And I see many uh, possibilities. So just to give a few examples, I think in the area of educational benchmarking and, and research, it allows us to uh, do joint work, particularly in areas of how we maintain rigors and standards in the design of curriculum, in, main, in the uh, assessment methods, and also uh, looking into the future into developing uh, teaching and learning methods for new competencies, new competencies which are important in the 21st uh, century. Uh, call it, you know, skills like critical thinking, creativity, uh, collaborations, and uh, you know, global uh, awareness. Now, in the area of uh, teacher training and educational leadership, the, we can build on the complementary strengths of the two systems. I mean, the U.S. has a very diverse uh, educational system, so you see interesting variations and innovations all over, and we are very keen to learn uh, from that and to see what might be relevant to Singapore. In our case, uh, in the area of, say, teacher development and training, for instance, we run a more integrated system from recruitment to uh, training to deployment. Uh, there are strengths and weaknesses in, in both approaches. And by looking at, uh, by sharing uh, ideas, by looking at the practical results of this, uh, we can look to learning the best aspects of uh, each of these different systems, and for us to then uh, take this forward. I think it's very important for us to put education at the center of all that we do because it is critical to the future of our children. It is cri critical to how we provide opportunities for them. So that, that uh, you raise a very interesting point. Singapore is well known for preparing mm. students for future, for jobs, for entering the job market. Mm. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your priorities in doing this? Well, uh, a, a, few, a few areas. One is that we need to enable our children to access a new future. The future is going to be different from the past and from today. And part of that effort is to ensure that what we do in education is aligned with the needs in our economy and in our society. Uh, so whether it is in aligning it with the sort of jobs that will be created in the future and with the demands of those jobs. The second area is to develop each and every one to their fullest potential and that means taking a student-centric approach in, in education, looking at harnessing the strengths of each individual and developing their strengths in ways that enable them to uh, fulfill those potential. You know. And the third area is that because the world is unpredictable, we don't know what the future will bring, it is important for each individual to have enduring values and skills. And en enduring values and skills, particularly in the development of character, in the development of competencies that will enable everyone to be adaptable for the future, uh, to be resilient, uh, will be an important uh, part of our focus. Mr. Minister, thank you very much for talking with us today. Thank you. Thank you.